scary movie. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Fear Freaks Podcast. I'm Braden. I'm Destiny. And we are the Fear Freaks. You know what Destiny and I talked about recently is that one of these days, maybe we're going to surprise the shit out of you guys. And she's going to be the one to have that energetic opening. Right, Des? One I just ran the surprise. Well, I'm not saying it's going to be any time in the near future. I'm just saying that, you know, maybe one of these days you can have that electrifying opening for everybody. Yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of. No. I can tell that she's so excited, guys. Um, but I hope that you guys are having a fantastic uh, week so far. Um, it is Wednesday. Uh, it has been a very long and hectic week for me. It's like I just really wish it was Friday <laughs> so badly. Um, I mean, it's just been it's been it's been crazy. So uh, no other words other than crazy is the way to describe my week. But I hope that you guys are having a semi decently paced, not as hectic or crazy week. Des, how's your week? It's been fine. Fine. Yeah. That's good. I'm super glad that it's just been fine. Not like she was with me on Monday or anything like that. So it's just been fine, though. It's been fine. So <laughs> yeah. not, not, not magic, you know. <laughs> magic. Uh, I would never describe magic. I would um, but what's going on, Chad? I hope that you guys are all doing well. LaMontre, I see you in the house. LaMontre, you put the first comment in the chat at 2.38 p.m. my time. Depending on where you're at. You might be a couple hours ahead of me, um, but yeah, thank you for always kickstarting this chat. Uh, we've got the Asylum Beyond the Dead, Ooh, a place that I would love to visit. What's going on? How are you? Um, we've got Rosie in the house. What's going on? We got Brett Man, Zodiac Z. We got um, Davey in the house, Davey Deathray. Um, we got Antonis. What's going on, buddy? Brandon. Cody, is it still daylight there? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually on the other side of the world right now. My day is actually just starting. It is about five o'clock in the morning and the sun is shining right through the windows. Uh, <laughs> I'm obviously kidding. No, but yes, it is still daylight outside. <laughs> it's um not as bright in my room that the camera makes it seem. So the sun is going down right now, though. Um, but yes, it is still daylight. Uh, we've got Ashton in the house. What's going on, buddy? And we're getting there. We got Aaron. What's going on? How are you? <clears throat> All righty. <clears throat> I think I'm good now. Everyone. Welcome. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I have no idea. I was just making sure. Oh, I, uh, I miss Denise. Denise, what's going on? Welcome in. Hi, uh, sorry, I've been uh, MIA, but she's back, everyone. Denise is back in the chat. Um, hope that you guys are uh, all doing well, as I said. Uh, tonight, guys, we're just going to be talking about horror movie news, about what's essentially been going on within the horror world. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff uh, that we can have a conversation about tonight because of just how much news has been breaking. I remember when the year started, Des and I were talking and she was like, I was like sending her all these movie updates and she's like, yeah, that's great, but where's the horror? And now it's like, we're at that point in the year. March is kind of that point where, we start getting new announcements. We start getting trailers. We start getting images for stuff that's really coming out throughout the course of the entire year. And now we can officially say that we've got a good amount of horror movie news to where we can crack this thing open. Um, we got a lot. We got not really a whole lot today, but we got two major things today that we're going to talk about. Number one, we got the first official images of Beetlejuice 2, which we're going to be talking about right here. And number two, we got 
the Alien Romulus official teaser trailer along with the poster. Now, they kind of played that a little smart. They po- uh, they did the poster like a half hour before the trailer because I saw that Mike from We Watched the Movie said, wish that we would have gotten a trailer, but I'll settle for the poster. And then like about five minutes after that came out, he was tweeting about the uh, the trailer and everything. So, um, yeah, really good stuff all around here today for horror fans. And we're going to get into that here shortly. Um, if there's news that we don't talk about tonight that you would like to chat about, I already know that there's going to be one. We're probably going to get that one out of the way right away. So that way we can, you know, say that we at least covered it. Um, pro- th- that'll be right after we talk about... Um, what do you call it? Saw the musical. So hope that you guys are all doing well um, and everything. But guys, the first thing that Des and I have to talk about is what's in our world of horror. Des, what's in your world of horror from this past week? What's been going on? Tell us. Um, Let's see. Honestly, not a whole lot just because we're busy. But I do have like some rewatches before I went out of town. Um, one of those being The Descent, which Brayden's never seen The Descent, which is pretty crazy. Um, I love The Descent. I think it's amazing. Then I also rewatched The Haunting of Hill House because I talked about that I finished the books. So I wanted to go back and watch the series, and I cried the entire time. It's so beautiful. I rewatched Smile. Not one of my favorites, but I just wanted to rewatch it. Then I rewatched Scream before the news broke out the day of but before the news and i was like what the fuck um and then a movie that we both watched for the first time and then i rewatched with brayden was poor things not fully horror but it does walk the line of frankenstein and it's very strange very weird um but i enjoy it so yeah and then we watch The Holdovers. It's not horror, but it's also very wonderful. I love that movie. Yeah, um, I'm already seeing some comments here about me not seeing The Descent. No, I have not seen it. I do know that Destiny also looked at me in utter just shock when <laughs> she found out that I hadn't seen it. Um, yes, guys, I haven't seen it. Okay, I haven't seen every movie known to mankind but i know as a horror fan i probably should have seen it i haven't seen it but i'm willing to watch it you know i mean what i just watched um i just watched the hills have eyes with you for the first time right like that was like something that i hadn't seen before and that was the remake of the hills have eyes i hadn't Mm -hmm. seen that and i just watched it with her for the first time so i mean i'm always looking for new opportunities to introduce new movies into my life i mean come on like if anything i see this as an opportunity and you guys are probably just just jealous no and you guys are probably just jealous because i get a chance to watch it for the first time and you don't you know that's (laughs) whatever makes you feel better about yourself about i know i'm trying to come up with excuses here but every single time that i say something i'm like wow I just sound dumber and dumber as if I shouldn't have already seen it, you know? Um, But yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. I will end up watching it. Don't worry about it. Okay. (laughs) Um, But yeah, for me, we, uh, we watch poor things. Um, Definitely a, an odd experience to see. I mean, it's a, it's good. It's, it's really good. Actually. Um, The, the movie definitely does walk the line, you know, with like Frankenstein and William Defoe's makeup kind of looks like horror esque and everything. Like he looks kind of spooky, but um, yeah, I mean, like I think that the, the movie in general, I think that Emma Stone definitely deserved the Academy award for her performance. I mean, um, acting in general is very hard, but what she had to do is she kind of had to, walk the line of like half non-human half human and you know kind of like learning the tropes of everything so it was it was good and i really liked it mark ruffalo though i don't think got enough love for his performance in the movie because i love mark ruffalo and he plays this fucking just weird old guy basically (laughs) middle-aged guy middle-aged guy i should say yeah he's not old so yeah not old but middle-aged guy it, it was just odd seeing him 
in a in a role that didn't necessarily have him being part of the good guys, you know, because like anytime someone does think of Mark Ruffalo, a lot of them think, oh, my God, I loved him in 13 going on 30. And it's like, yeah, because I mean, Matt in 13 going on 30 is amazing. He's a great character and a great guy. Um, mm-hmm. And then you see him in poor things and you're like, oh, my God, Matt, what happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, seriously, really good overall um outside of that yeah the only movie i really watched um only movie other than that i really watched this weekend was um the holdovers which yeah we watched that together and uh that movie was great i think paul giamatti was great i think that he definitely deserved the golden globe um glad that that was up for golden globe nominations because it didn't necessarily get anything um for the oscars but uh, yeah, definitely overall, um, really, really solid. Not horror related, but highly recommend watching The Holdovers if you guys haven't had a chance to already. Um, Destiny, yes, she did say it. She did cry. Um, it, it is definitely one of those movies. It's like kind of like one of those feel good movies, if you will. But it's got like uh, a lot of emotional stuff in there that is definitely going to, you know, tug on some heartstrings, but great, great overall. So, <clears throat> so what twilight team is Braden on? You know, this is a question that I've gotten asked a couple times, uh, throughout, um, like middle school and even high school. And then destiny asked me what team I was and My initial answer was Jacob. But, but I do, I I think the more I reflect on it and we've watched the movies because they've just been on in the background. And I mean, I shouldn't even really say that once they're on, we're both basically just watching it at that point. Um, What's that? You have to. It's so good. Yeah. So, I mean, I got to say that uh, upon watching it more and more, I got to say I more go towards Edward because Jacob is just kind of that weird best friend that just lingers on to you that just wants to get with you, basically. And that's that's his character, really. I mean, don't get me wrong. When he turns into the werewolf and stuff like that, I, I mean, it's it's really cool. But I think that overall edward actually is bella's love interest and has that connection with bella and you know once that whole thing kind of starts it's like okay this feels more natural whereas jacob it's weird seeing the two of them on screen together because bella by eclipse there's kind of that little love triangle going on and jacob does kiss bella in eclipse and then she punches him and breaks her hand, <laughs> which is which is very funny. But yeah, I think that uh, the more I reflect on it, I got to go Team Edward. Like watching Jacob just get dragged along on this long train that he's never going to actually be able to get on is uh, is painful to watch at times. So <laughs> I'd rather watch her try to go and save Edward from stepping into the sunlight to kill himself than watch um, than watch uh, Jacob do that. So uh, what do you got, Brett, man? We got, so what uh, team is Braden on? You know what? Let's go ahead and uh-huh. give you... Oh, $20. I wanted a peanut. $20 can buy many peanuts. Oh man, uh-huh. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking hey. of the Simpsons, we were just at um, yeah, we were at Universal on Saturday. Went through the whole lard light area, but we do have to talk about something before that. We got to do. Uh, what did we do this weekend, Des? What did we do on Friday? What was the initial reason that we went out to Los Angeles this past weekend? You tell me. Well, we went in. Saw, saw the musical, the unofficial parody, and let me just tell you, if this is anywhere near you, you have got to go watch it, because when I say this is like the funniest thing I've ever seen, and I was crying laughing throughout, and it's an hour and 40 minutes long, and there is an intermission, 
And so it's like a, it's like the movie. It's like a full length movie. And I was crying, laughing throughout it. Um, it was amazing. It was even better than I was expecting. And I would absolutely do it again in a heartbeat. Heck yeah. Um, hold on. I want to uh, comment on this here real quick, just because I pulled up this comment. Um, I wish Mark Ruffalo won that Oscar instead of RDJ. Now, both of them are very good. Both of them are very good. Like obviously RDJ from Oppenheimer was great as well. Um, Des and I were talking about this and we did both agree that in terms of character, yeah, Mark Ruffalo was definitely more present in the movie because he is a pretty integral piece throughout the duration of really the first two acts. It's like once it gets into act two B and then into the third act, he kind of like, you know, starts to go down just a little bit, but he's very present. RDJ is present in Oppenheimer, but he's not as involved, um, even though he does have a really big piece with everything that's happening in the future after everything kind of occurs with the atomic bomb um, because the movie bounces around a lot. But I do think RDJ was at the point in his career where he very much deserved it because RDJ had done a lot of like he did the movie, the judge. What year was that? 2015, I think. And he was really good in that movie, but I don't think it did anything. I don't think he got really anything for that. But I think he was at the point in his career where he's going to get it. I think Mark Ruffalo is getting close. I feel like he's like one or two rolls away from getting that Oscar, in my opinion. Um, But jumping back here, uh, yeah, we did see Saw the musical on Friday. Uh, As Destiny said, a Saw parody. Holy shit, guys. Belly laughing a good portion of the time. Look it up. I first heard about it from Bloody Disgusting. I literally was on Twitter one day and it said, saw the musical um, getting ready to do a worldwide tour. And I was like, what the fuck is saw the musical? And I literally clicked on it. I started reading about it. People were saying that it is absolutely hysterical. And I was like, okay, where's it going to be? I was like, up oh, the closest city. Cause it's not going to come to Phoenix. So I'm like the closest city to me is Los Angeles. And then I was like, Oh my gosh, that'd be perfect because if destiny wants to go, then I can see if my sister and her boyfriend want to go. Cause they live out in Burbank. So that's what we did. We spent the whole weekend with them. Um, they went with us on Friday night. We all went and we had a great time. Um, it was a, it was a low budget musical. And I was so surprised with what they were able to accomplish with a low budget. Because the theater we went to, there's like three or four shows that play at one time at this theater. This was easily the smallest theater I've ever been to. It kind of felt like, because when I was doing acting classes in college, I took a few acting classes at the Chicago Actors Studio. And they have a section, it's like a theater section, and it basically, the room we were in about looked the size of that. So I was like, oh my gosh, this theater is incredibly small. And I was trying to do some research earlier in the day and Destiny is like, stop looking at it. She's like, stop. I was like, she's like, you're just going to get your expectations set up and you may be disappointed. I will say I was kind of disappointed when I walked into that room and I was just like, because we walked in, we walked up these like, little tight flights of stairs and I'm like, where the fuck are we going? And then you walk in and it's literally just like a a theater on the top floor of a building. (laughs) And I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is going to be a little weird because the stage is so small, (laughs) but I was so surprised. I think we all were honestly, because like Creighton even looked at me and he was like, Brayden, what are we, what did you get us into? I was like, I don't know. I I have no idea what's about to play in front of me. So the musical starts. And I got to say within like the first three minutes, we were all rolling with the dialogue and with the music. And the music was actually really fucking catchy. I'm not going to lie. 
Um, but yeah, guys, the cast is literally like three or four people. I think it's literally a four person cast. And then they've got the sound engineer and the technician working up top to make sure everything correlates um, together. And wow, what? <laughs> it was great. I, I loved it. Uh, I know Des did too. Des, do you want to share some more thoughts on it? Yeah, I think it was only three people that were acting. And then there's people like behind, but they were playing multiple roles. You had like one lady, she's playing Billy the Puppet and Jigsaw and some other like background ca characters and Amanda. Because you can kind of tell, um, like you could see like, from like the bald cap there was like the spots left over from and you could just see like her makeup showing but seeing what these characters are doing and every character that lisa is playing two characters and then like i said some of them are playing multiple characters and at first i didn't realize how small it was until i started to really pay attention to like what they looked like and i was like there's no way they are doing all this because like i said it's an hour and 40 minutes there's like a I think a 15 minute um, intermission, I believe. And so that's not minutes. a lot of time. Yeah, and that's not a lot of time. And they're sitting here running literally in circles doing this and pulling stuff off. And so you can see the seams of it, but I think that's what makes it so great and how much they're putting into this. And every one of them sang wonderfully. There is like all three of them I thought were amazing. And this is a very, it's a very raunchy, musical which yeah. i personally loved if you look it up you can kind of see kind of like where it's going and i mean if you keep up with like pop culture saw stuff you can kind of see where it's going and they really push it really far and i loved it it was everything i wanted and we also got little piggies and every time um pig mask pig came face. on yeah, pig yeah, everyone pig these are little piggies and do you have just... the piggy with you i left mine in my car again otherwise i would have yeah go grab it destiny's gonna show you guys the <clears throat> now these things were two dollars each um we all got one <laughs> and every single time that pig mask came in this is what everyone would squeeze show them it first of all show it it looks like it literally looks like the pig from toy story it's like a mini one it does yeah. um but Destiny really wanted a, a piggy, so go ahead and squeeze it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much like a dog toy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, basically. So any and it was awesome because at any time you would see the pig mask, you would just hear that noise throughout the entire theater. It would just like you would just hear all the squeaks <laughs> just around. Um, but yeah, guys, the musical's awesome. Um, really wasn't sure how they were going to be able to pull it off. But apparently this is like a next step with horror because um, I know Davey, you messaged me um, after he saw that we had seen it on Friday. He messaged me on Saturday or uh, you commented. I'm sorry. You commented on um, my post and you were saying that you saw evil dead last year, um, the musical. And then they had the Scream musical going on in Vegas. And it just really seems like that this is now becoming a, a thing. And I love that. If they can do stuff like this, I'm all for it. Because this was so good. Um, it mostly only focuses on the first movie. But if, you're, uh, if you've seen all the Saw movies, you will pick up on references throughout the Saw franchise, which, again, I very much appreciated. Um, highly recommend, guys. If it, it is going on a national tour, look up Saw the Musical. They have a website. If it's coming to your city, tickets are super cheap. I think the cheapest one, I, I think I got all of our tickets for, um, it, I mean, they're $45 each. But still, $45 if you and uh, a friend or a date go and see it. I guarantee you, you guys all have a good time. So check out and see Saw the Musical in a city near you. Um, I don't know where it's going next, but I do know it's popular enough to be on this national tour. Um, so please check it out. Let us know what you guys think if you get a chance to go see it. Um, but we... The Fear Freaks, we definitely recommend it. Uh, good night, Cody. If you're heading out of here, good night. Thank you for uh, being in here. Good night, Cody. <clears throat> Mr. Ham. 
His name is Adam. His name's Adam. And yeah. mine's Dr. Gordon. Yeah. Mine's Lawrence Boy Gordon. Right. <laughs> 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 yep. We, yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, really good stuff all around. So uh, check out Saw the Musical if you get a chance to. Okay. Moving into um, all this movie news that's been going on. Holy shit, guys. We got a lot to talk about. I did see that. Um, who said earlier that we are getting a lot of marketing right now for the first Omen. I haven't even seen the trailer for that. I just got the uh, screening invite for that um, on April 3rd. I don't know if I'll be able to make it because um, it's at 4.30. Um, but yeah, I, I know that that's a thing. I got to say, not really excited for that one. <laughs> so... Um, I don't know. I may, may I, I haven't seen the trailer, so maybe I have to actually watch the trailer before I can say that, but I don't know. Like I'm not huge on the Omen movies as is. I don't really care about the original one very much. The remake is fine. Um, I remember seeing it, um, like once, maybe twice when I was in like high school and I don't know. It just isn't memorable for me. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll give this one a go. We'll see. Uh, Des, what do you think of the first Omen? How do you think that looks? Um, I saw a little bit of a trailer because it has been coming up a lot because I watch a lot of YouTube and I've seen at least like five of like the little trailers a day. Um, so I've seen like a little bit of it. I'm trying not to watch too much of trailers. So I kind of just watch a little bit and then I skip the rest. And from what I've seen, I don't think it looks terrible because whenever I first heard about it, I was like, oh, like, whatever. Because, like, these type of movies, I feel like they're almost, like, overdone just because we got, like, so many, like, religious horror movies for so long. But I'll still watch it. I don't know if I'm going to go to the theaters. Well, first of all, I don't know if my theater is going to have it because my local theater does not have any horror movies except for Imaginary. But every new release that's coming out, I cannot find it in my theater unless it's just not fully updated. But some of these movies are like coming out this week. So I don't know what's going on. So I probably won't be able to watch it regardless. But even if I could, I don't know if this is one I would necessarily go see in theaters. I might just wait for streaming just because like, I don't know. But I think this is, I don't remember who's directing it, but I think it's like um, a woman's first directorial debut so if that's the case that's exciting so i hope it does well i hope it's good i just don't know if i'll be able to watch it right now yeah i mean for first time directors you always hope that their movies do well because if they do and if they're actually good you definitely want to see more of them so you want the movie to do well so that gets their name out there so that it can do well. i didn't know that it was this woman's first time directing it um but I mean, again, I'm willing to give it a chance. Uh, I'm not saying that I just like hate all Omen movies. I mean, I'm definitely willing to to see it. But do I think that it's going to be great, let alone sounds great, just from the title as someone who's not a fan really of the Omen movies? Not really. But um, uh, the first one that we uh, should probably get out of the way, just in case there's any sort of questions down the line, um don't worry guys i had this covered okay uh <sighs> nev's back for scream seven guys oh. so so um yeah that's uh that's a thing um i just wanted to kind of get both of our thoughts out there i know that des isn't really excited for it um just with all the shit that's been going on because we did cover that back when that that went down and this was just kind of sudden La I think it was last week. Um, but yeah, Nev Campbell just posted on her Instagram the Scream 7 script and then announced that she was back. That um, that was definitely very shocking. Um, I feel like that this is like a two a two sided double edged sword because they're trying to get as many fans into the seats as they can with Kevin Williamson being involved uh, as director, um, which is good for him. Um, but he's not writing it. It's being written by the peeps that wrote Scream 5 and 6. So, um, yeah, that's... What do you guys think of that? I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are 
on what Spyglass and um, Paramount is currently doing um, to try and get asses in seats. Des, what do you think of this? Um, I think it's bullshit, honestly, because like whenever Melissa Barrera was unjustly Jess, fired, first of all, and then, like you said, you're trying to save face value and you're trying to make as much money as you can. And so how do you do that? You give money to someone that you didn't even give the money to in the last movie, which I think is crazy because, like, if you're wronged, wouldn't you kind of be like, oh, which I don't know how this all works. You know, I'm not in the freaking mus the movie business, but, like, I remember seeing Melissa Barrera speaking out and, like, in favor of Nev Campbell not getting what she deserved, what she felt like she deserved getting paid for and she spoke up for her and like stood up for her so then i think it's pretty crazy for this to happen and then it's not even it's seeing everyone that was like commenting like on nev campbell's post i was like wow i'm very confused because you had a lot of people then showing support for um melissa Brea, who then are like supporting nev campbell and so I feel like it's really kind of put a wedge into fan because at the end of the day, there's something far more important going on than Scream 7. But that's where all of this comes from. And so, um, I don't know. It's put a really bad taste in my mouth. So for one, I'm not excited. And I knew like as soon as like, if this were to happen, I knew like it was gonna be like pretty crazy. And I really felt like Scream 5 had a good end off for uh, Sydney and Gail. And I said, if this was the last movie we got with both of them, I think that's fine because I thought it was a good ending. And then in Scream 6, we have Gail live and, you know, they're talking about Sydney getting her happy ending. And it's like, OK, that's good because that's what I wanted. And now she's coming back again. And so it's like, oh, well, dang, what's uh, what's going to happen now? And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really excited. Yeah, I mean, like the th again, it's kind of like it's kind of like two ends because you know we know how they handled the situation um, with Melissa and you know that and how they treated Nev prior to this. But I was telling Des, it's almost like now that they don't have two more actresses to pay, they can just take that money and dish it out to Nev because it, it seems like that Nev is going to be a big part of Scream 7. That's just going to be the case now is it's really just going to focus on her. And honest, my honest to God hope is that there, when the marketing starts is that they say, this is the final one. I think that they just need to wrap this up and that's it. She's coming back. This needs to be it. Point blank. Um, but yeah, I just kind of find the whole situation to be interesting. I'm kind of uh, looking at what your guys' thoughts are here in the chat. I'm seeing some, you know, good points, uh, valid points, stuff like that. But yeah, I think that um, this whole situation is kind of getting out of control. But it seems like Spyglass was able to come up with something and say, you know what, this is how we're going to approach it. And now Nev is back. Kevin Williamson's directing. Um, they've got some of the uh, originals, the two of the biggest originals involved with this next installment. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that's uh, that was crazy. So just wanted to get that out of the way to kind of just shed some light on where like we're both currently kind of at and even where you guys are at. I'm just curious to see what you guys think of it. Um, next one, we'll go ahead and knock out the the next big horror franchise uh, right away. Um Halloween's officially getting a TV series. Uh, that's happening. Who would have ever fucking thought that you'd see Halloween on the small screen? Um, it was bound to happen eventually. But yeah, I mean, Des, what are your thoughts of them using the original film to now build this new TV series off of? After we just saw a sequel trilogy that was based off the original film, now they're going back to that film to now build off of a TV series. What are your thoughts on that? Hi, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Um, 
You know, I always thought that it would have been cool for there to be a Halloween TV series and for it to kind of play out as like trick or treat in a way to where you have different storylines happening, but they're interweaving. And I thought it would be cool, like every like third episode or whatever it could be about like Michael Myers. So you can still include that, but then you have other like sort of spooky traditional Halloween things going on. You can even include the mask again. So I always thought that would be cool. That way we get a variety of different things and you kind of have like John Carpenter's ideas coming together like of an anthology series into one, but still including Michael Myers, then it like all ties in somehow at the end. I was always hoping for something like that, but this is like, I don't know. I feel like it's almost inevitable. Like we're getting Friday 13th, so it doesn't really surprise me. And I feel like more shows are going to move into this or more movies are going to move into this direction of like a, a series. Um, so I think it's interesting. I mean, I wish, I hope they do something pretty cool with it. I don't want to see, which to be fair, I doubt we'll see anything that we just saw in like these past three movies because they are pretty out there. So I hope there's like some different stuff going on, but it feels a little bit like redundant to just have that already. I was kind of hoping that we would have like some time before we got any more Halloween content because we just had so much of it. And I feel like if you do that, then it's just going to get like lackluster. So I feel like they should have waited like 10 years for Halloween stuff, but whatever. Yeah, they really did just kind of jump the gun <clears throat> like not even a year after Halloween. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm good. Not even a year after Halloween Ends came out we got the announcement of what is up and coming next and that it's going to be a TV series. And this also dawns after Friday the 13th is going to the small screen now as well. Now, if they decide to do a TV series and then also implement a movie into it, then fans kind of get the best of both worlds, you know, because it's like you've got content coming to the small screen. You've got content coming to the big screen now that can also get very messy and cause a lot to watch um i do feel bad for like you know even marvel fan marvel fans particularly right now because it's so damn hard to catch up on everything that marvel has done it's getting harder and harder to catch up on all this horror stuff because you know you've got this entire series of stuff that you have to now sit down and invest hours into to watch even if you want to catch on to the small references in, you know, the later movies, you definitely want to be familiar with the timelines of previous ones. So it's definitely hard to do. And now you start implementing these series um, and stuff like that into it. And it's going to be like, holy shit, dude, this next generation of fans is going to be like, should I really dedicate all of my hours to doing this? And, you know, us classic fans are going to be like, fuck yeah, you should. Cause it's worth it. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see what they do with it because I did see Aaron's comment saying that we don't know necessarily what build off of it means. So there's different things that can be done. I'm just, my hope is that it's something original. You know, I'm hoping that there's an idea out there that is like really, really good that they end up building off of. So that way um, it at least feels fresh. Um, but yeah, that because I really wanted to see, I wanted to see Halloween 3, man. I wanted to see a H3 TV series so badly. I don't care if anyone in the chat here doesn't like H3. I wanted to see a sequel series and what better way to do it. Cause they would never do that in a movie. They would never do it for a movie because of nowadays it might get good reception, but the best way to go about that would be like a six, um, a six episode TV series, I think would be the best way to go about doing that. So yeah, I I'm, that's what I wanted. That's what I was hoping the news was going to be. But yeah, uh, either way, Halloween TV series coming. Definitely stay tuned because the more news we find out about it, the more we will talk about it right here on the show. Um, what's next? Des, I know you were disappointed we didn't get a trailer for this today because you said they've been waiting for the trailer for a long time. But Des did wake up this morning to a text that I sent her with the first look of Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. 
in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, um, in Beetlejuice 2, I should say. Um, but yeah, uh, Des, thoughts on Beetlejuice, uh, Beetlejuice so far, based on the first two images that we saw today. Um, what do you think? I am very excited. I think Michael Keaton looks wonderful. I am upset we haven't gotten the trailer because it's supposed to come out like yesterday. And they said no. And then people are saying, oh, it's going to come out today. And then no. Well, we got some images. Um, the images of like Jen Ortega and uh, Winona Ryder, like them together, I feel like something about it. I wasn't like fully like in love with that image like I was with Michael Keaton's image because I feel like something about it didn't feel like as like weird as the original. Also, I don't like that it's called Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I would have just preferred Beetlejuice too. I was very confused when you were calling it that. I was like, what are you talking about? Um, but I'm just going to call it Beetlejuice too. But yeah, they're some other outfits or maybe it was the hair like something about it and i did see there was a leak going around on tiktok that i actually did see of the trailer um without really even knowing that's what it was and then i saw jenna ortega and i was like oh my god but it was only like five seconds um so that part had me very excited so i'm very excited oh i'm very excited though for the trailer okay, I'm I love the original movie. I think the original character is wonderful. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited. Winona Ryder, Jenna Ortega, Michael Keaton. Oh, and Catherine O'Hare. Yeah, can't mm -hmm. forget her. So I'm very excited for the movie. Brett, I know that I just saw you say that with images comes a trailer soon. Yep. I do want to talk about that first image this morning of Michael Keaton with the green and everything. I thought that he looked so good. I sent it to Misael as well. And he said, how the fuck does he look the exact same after all these years? <laughs> and it's just like, dude, right? I And I texted him back. I was like, my only hope in life is that I age like one of these actors that are just aging so well. I'm like, they look great for their age. Um, especially Winona Ryder. I mean, did you see like looking at her in the first image and looking at her from the first movie, it's like, dude, like what the fuck is going on? Like she looks like maybe it's only been a couple of years different. Like that's really about it. Um, but seriously, I think that uh, Michael Keaton looks absolutely fantastic right now. And he has been saying that he has seen it he says that it's a very fun, lighthearted, just good time. And I'm like, you know what? See, that's all I want with this movie. If that is true, and that is my exact words as I come out of the theater in September, we're, we're in for a good time. And that's it. Um, but I think that it looks great so far. Tim Burton's back behind the camera. Um, obviously, uh, he's got a good relationship here with Jenna Ortega as well from Wednesday. So, you know, I'm excited to, to see um, this partnership continue, especially into Wednesday season two. Um, but all good stuff. The Beetlejuice Instagram is officially active. They posted something the other day that just said Beetlejuice. They posted today Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, saying that something's coming tomorrow. So I think the official trailer will drop tomorrow. Um, so be on the lookout for that, everybody. Um they did hint saying stay tuned for March 21st. And obviously it's not just, it's not going to be images. We already got a poster. It's trailer time, baby. So we're going to get that first trailer. I'm about positive for uh, Beetlejuice two tomorrow. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to, um, to see what they got cooking up because the images so far, especially the one with Michael Keaton as the character just looks amazing. We uh, did see Beetlejuice at, universal on saturday we didn't get a picture uh maybe we will uh, when we're there for halloween horror nights in the fall um because he's always beetlejuice is always walking around the park and everything and the guy that they got playing him especially at universal hollywood is awesome i mean he looks really good in the makeup and he definitely gets into the character like with the voice and you know everything um i know i did a terrible impression absolutely atrocious <laughs> destiny's like I, i'm not gonna say it but 
I'll let you though. Yeah. <clears throat> They need to open uh, Beetlejuice's opening with him still in the waiting room. They just have to. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. I know. I'm I'm curious uh, how this is, um, how they're going to kickstart it. But, you know, tomorrow we're going to get that first official look. Um, hopefully I don't spoil too much with, uh, with the trailer, the marketing. Um, but it's looking like it's going to be pretty promising from every. I mean, this has been hype for years. This is been in development for so long and i actually think that because the news broke that beetlejuice 2 was happening when i lived in chicago still and i remember sending it to maggie and she was like is this real and i was like it's breaking news all from all these big media sources it seems like it's officially finally happening and the fact that we now not only have a poster not only have some images, but are now getting a trailer. It's like official. Like this is insane. So yeah, definitely excitement all around for this upcoming movie. Um, Des, any more thoughts that you have on uh, on this so far until we get a trailer or no? Nope. Hopefully it is tomorrow. <laughs> yes, that was the impression. Yep. Um, let's, uh, do the, Hey, I'm, I'm told that it was good. I'm told that it was good. I know that I know Gavin's just probably fucking around. So, you know, I could do it again if, if need be, no, it's um, okay. let's move on. <laughs> the last, well, there's two more things I actually want to talk about. One of them's from today. Another one is from last week. But guys, we got the Alien Romulus trailer today. Des, what are your thoughts on not only this poster, but this trailer? Um, I thought the poster looked so cool. Um, it looks very just, it's very simple, but very sleek. You have like the drool coming down, which I thought is great. I thought it was wonderful. And then I did watch the little trailer for it because it was only a minute long and they didn't show like really too much. But there's some shots in this movie that I was like, oh, my God, this looks so good. One specifically, there's a bunch of blood. So that I'm very excited for because I love a lot of blood. Um, I'm very excited for this. And I'm not really a huge, like, alien person. Um, I've only seen the first and second one. And I've only seen them once each. I want to rewatch those. And then I would like to finish the rest of the franchise. Um but I am pretty excited for this one. Uh, I was more excited than I really thought I was going to be, just considering I'm not super deep into the franchise. But I'm excited. I think it looks pretty promising. Promising is definitely the word I would use as well. I think that, like you, the poster, I'm actually a fan of it. I thought that it looks it looks good. It looks very alien-like, you know? Um I saw a couple people uh, commenting on uh, when I shared the poster on social media. I saw a few people saying that they thought it was a little too plain, a little too simple. Um, but I was like, you know, sometimes simple is all you really need, guys. This is the first poster. Like, it's just the teaser poster. Because they have more, like nowadays with movies, you get more posters as you get closer to the movie. Like, you guys think that the Beetlejuice 2 poster is just still going to be the hand with the date on it. No, they're going to have more stuff. They're probably going to have character posters coming. Not saying that they're going to do that for Alien, but there's going to be more on the way. The trailer, however, though, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, for one minute, it was amazing. Like, I was, like, blown away with just the way that the movie looks, the atmosphere that it has. Um, like destiny was saying when I, I'm a sucker for camera, like camera shots that kind of like back up and kind of do a reveal. And as the camera continued to move, it, it goes down and you see the pool of blood, uh, or not really the pool, but like the, it looks like a bathtub, like just like, yeah, it looks like oh. white tile covered in blood. Yeah. And obviously white is good if you're going to get blood on it because it's going to give you the most color pop out of it. Right. Um, 
honestly, one of my favorite shots in the trailer is when the fucking army of xenomorphs are fucking chasing those people and they're just jumping i'm like bro that is fuck now i've always had an issue with those fuckers because they look like giant spiders with fucking tails is what they look like so i immediately have a problem with them so that to me uh who said it looked terrifying where uh i think it was um Seba or sebastian says it looks scary yeah I agree. It looks scary because if you don't think I would be shitting my pants if I had that army chasing me, you are wrong. I would be. I mean, I'm sure anybody would. I mean, look at what those fucking things do to people. Um, yeah, it looks good. And then we only got that one little just super quick shot of the main xenomorph and it's just the tongue coming out and it's just like a whoo. Man, it just like had it had my heart racing at the end. I was like, that is a fucking good ass teaser. And if they continue to market like this, I think that we're in for a, a good treat. Now, the biggest treat to us today is that the poster said only in theaters for the longest time. It said it was going to be on Hulu. And I feel like that they finally pulled together and said, you know what? We made a mistake with Prey. We're going to go ahead and drop this in theaters because this looks like a good time. And I think that this movie is going to do very well in the movie theater, um, especially because, I mean, um, is it you, you pronounce his name? right? Is it Fade or Fede L. Alvarez? Fede Alvarez. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, he directed Evil Dead and Don't Breathe. Um, I, obviously, uh, I like both of those movies quite a bit. Um, so I've got all the faith in the world in, in him for alien Romulus for a fact. So, oh, and I that. That yeah, I will. I agree with, I haven't seen Prey still. I need to, I know I need to, but I agree. Um, just from what I know about the movie, both of those I think should have been in theaters. So I'm glad at least this one's good to theaters. That has me pretty excited. You know, um, let me take a look here. So, because it says, I'm going to pull up this article really quick. Uh, I think that it's kind of a soft reboot, if I'm not mistaken. Well, let me look. Because it says that the trailer returns to the confined terror of the original classic. Um, let's see here. The iconic faces here in the new movie will be taking more contained approach to the franchise. Okay, so it's more of a contained approach to the franchise, saying that it's channeling the spirit of both the original classic and the video game Alien Isolation. So it seems like that this is kind of like what he did with Evil Dead. It's kind of like a soft reboot of that. So, or if you want to, I mean, it's a hard reboot of Evil Dead, but, you know, it's kind of like that. So that's, um, that's what's going on here. So it seems like it's going to be its own standalone movie, likely going to give references to the franchise. I'm not going to lie. The woman that we see in the trailer gives me very, very heavy Ripley vibes. So, um, and we only see her for like three seconds because she comes walking up with the gun. She's kind of got the little dirt on her face and everything. And I was like, this fucking looks like Ripley. What the fuck? Um, so, and then it cuts to the uh, xenomorph with the tongue pop out. And then we get the title. So it seems like it's just going to be like a soft um, reboot of the movie and of the game. So I hope that that answers your question, Gavin. <clears throat> um, and then anything else you want to say about alien? No, I'm, I'm excited. This will be my first one in theater. So I'm looking forward to it. Heck yeah. <clears throat> um, Alien Covenant, as bad as it gets, is still a decent alien movie. It's not The Predator. Um, yeah, The Predator is terrible. 
The Predator is really fucking bad. Um, Alien Covenant, I thought was, I thought it was okay. This looks a million times better than Alien Covenant. Um, but my favorite Alien movies are Alien and Aliens. So you know, Aliens more so than Alien. But um, yeah, I think that the first two are are great movies and then the rest of the franchise just kind of goes on a it's like it's like what any franchise does it goes off and isn't as good because they want to make money off the title but this finally looks promising i'm seeing i don't think i've seen a bad rap on on this yet uh, granted, the teaser is only a minute long, and there's not too much to really say about it. Or then, if you like blood, like Destiny, you notice the pool of the blood, and immediately, if I'm Destiny, I'm sitting there and I see that, I'm like, "Yep, that's all I needed to see. I'm in." Literally, <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Count me in. I need to see what's happening right here." Thank you. <laughs> You're like, however that got to that. I need to see how it got to that. <laughs> yeah, I would like to know. Thank you. <laughs> now, honestly, the biggest disappointment would be as if that's the opening shot of the movie and that's all you see. And then, <laughs> and from there, but you know what? I don't think that um, Fede is going to allow that to, uh, to do that. Too. Oh, we're getting some blood. Oh, I know that we are. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm definitely excited for, for that. Um, the last one that I want to talk about is The Crow. Um, the Crow, we got an official trailer for that last week. Reboot of the 1990, is it two or three? I don't or know. It was in 1990. Somewhere in the early 90s. Um, 90, I'm going to say 94. I'm looking it up. I think it's 92. 94, I was right. Is it 94? What? Yeah. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. I was two years off. Um, yeah. Thank you, uh, Brett, man. Appreciate it. Gory, what's going on? Welcome in. Um, so, yeah, we got the official trailer for The Crow starring Bill Skarsgård. Doesn't look terrible, but it looks very john wick like i'm seeing a lot of comparison to that lionsgate is kind of getting into this um obsession with turning their movies into john wick like movies but it works for john wick because the plot of it is that he comes out of retirement because these thugs kill his dog and obviously you want to see a man go fucking ape shit on people if they're killing your dog. I mean, it's, it's a fun movie. Like the purpose of John, of John wick. I almost said John Tate. <laughs> the purpose of John wick is just to be fun, action packed movies. The fourth one is batshit insanity. And it's a great time. However, they did do Sisu last year, which is that world war two movie with the guy, the old man that just kind of does a John wick style it's John Wick style with World War II. Um, the Crow, though, it's got good elements to it, and it's got not so good elements to it. Bill Skarsgård, he looks like he's going to give a good performance. I think Bill Skarsgård is always good in everything that he's in. Um, I mean, he's a talented actor. Um, I don't like the way Eric Draven looks. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. I know that, Destiny, you're kind of the same way, right? Yeah, still not a fan of the look, even after seeing the trailer. It doesn't look as jarring, I will say, as just like those images looked, because we got to like really see a lot in those images. In the movie, I wasn't like as like, oh my god, taken aback by it. But it's still not not my favorite. I still wish it would have looked mm -hmm. different. But what am yeah. I gonna do? Yeah, I mean, um and Brett man, like I'm I'm not like against it because I do think that some of the kills in it definitely look pretty fucking 
like cool. Like that final one, I'm not gonna lie, where he like shoots through his stomach and kills the guy. I'm like, that's fucking just badass. Like, you know. Um, again, I'm not going into this movie to hate it. Um, I do love the original crow. I think that it's great. Um, De- Des, you haven't seen the crow yet, have you? No. Not yet. Destiny hasn't seen the crow yet. Um, but I'm sure she will before the new one comes out. Um, but uh <clears throat> What do you call it? Uh, there was one comment that I saw. Uh, yeah, Gory killed the dog that his dying wife got him. Yeah, so it's de- he does say that in the movie that it's more than just a puppy, which it is because it was a gift to him from his wife. Um, so obviously he had a reason. But I mean, so I'd go that crazy if someone killed my dog, just period. Like that's that's just not that's not going to happen. Um but yeah, the the crow. I think that overall the direction looks fine. I think that some of the action looks pretty well filmed. Um, overall, um, looks like it could be decent. All I just hope is that they don't shy crazy far away from everything. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the original, so I feel kind of indifferent about it because I really. Even though I've seen images and everything. Um, I will agree people are talking about like it doesn't really have like the gothic feel of the original. And just from images alone, and I did watch the trailer with Brayden, I would agree to that from what we've seen. It does seem to be missing that like atmosphere to it. Um, and yeah, it, it's very like action packed, uh, especially during like some scenes of the trailer. And again, you know, I don't know how much that compares to the original but i don't know i feel indifferent because i don't really have an opinion i know i will i just said i will it's on the list gavin i have it right somewhere over here i own it i just haven't watched it yet but yeah well will i go see it maybe just because everyone's talking about it i would like to see it just to see if it actually is good but i definitely want to go into this without the original in mind because yeah yeah i think that um the goth feels definitely missing it feels very modern um i did read um what the director had said and he did say that this is more of a modern approach so it's like a reboot for a modern audience um, kind of following the same story uh, with it. Um, But yeah, we're going to, we're going to see the action looks well filmed. And as long as it's entertaining, that's going to, that's going to get me. It'll get me enough. So yeah. Yeah, and if it sucks, we always have the original to go back to. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could always go back to the original, just like we do with Halloween every year, right? We yeah. Always go back, we always go back to the original Halloween. Why? Because <laughs> nobody's made one as good since then. So. But then those weird ones kind of grow on you, and then you want to keep watching them, and you don't know why. Yeah. Sebastian, that's a pretty good comment right here. Is the atmosphere makes it feel like a Zack Snyder movie? I will say there's a couple color grades in this uh, from the trailer that did make it look very Zack Snyder e. The shot where he's falling and all the crows are flying around him that truly does look like a shot, and it's color graded basically the exact same as when Bruce Wayne and Batman v Superman is walking up to visit his parents at the uh, cemetery. I think that um, it looked basically like it was right out of that movie. Um, But yeah. uh, And I don't hate Zack Snyder as a director either. Um, But yeah, either way, we'll see what happens. The review will be right here on this channel when, um, when it comes out. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, Destiny, what do you got coming up this uh, this week? What's happening? Um, Sunday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I will be on Good Real Hunting's channel for Back from the Dead during the anniversaries of March. And that is all. 
What, what? There you go, guys. Go catch Destiny on Back from the Dead this upcoming Sunday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. What is that, like noon uh, Brett's time? Yep. Noon Brett's time. Check that out this upcoming Sunday. With me, the only thing that you can anticipate is I've got the press screening for Godzilla vs. Kong on Tuesday night, next Tuesday, so you guys can anticipate the review for that, I believe, I believe next thursday so technically we'll go get through uh fear freaks but i got that coming up this week and then nothing until next week on fear freaks so thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight you guys were absolutely awesome as always there's a lot of great conversations here going on throughout the chat which we love appreciating or which we love appreciating which we love to see um love to see that you guys got uh great communications with each other and all that stuff so keep that up let's keep it friendly and everything um thank you guys for being so great i hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your guys's week and we will see you guys next week on fear freaks good night everybody